Okay, so today we're going to get into the basics of drawing walls. Um, I'm going to break walls down into about four different episodes here uh, so we can get into uh, the more complex versions of walls at a different time and these don't get to be too terribly long. Um, but today we're basically just getting into the different ways of drawing walls and the tools that are associated with that. So up here under the architecture uh, tab, we've got our wall tool. There is a drop down that shows structural and by face. We're just going to concern ourselves with a wall architecture tool right now. So I click that. You'll see under the properties tab, all of a sudden I've got basic wall, generic eight inch. Um, so that's the type of wall that we're going to be drawing here. And then we've got our, uh, our different kind of tools that pop up below the ribbon, as well as our modified place wall specific tools uh, for sketching up here. So Initially, I have my default line tool um, selected, and basically all that is is you click one end, you drag, you click at another end, and that fills in the wall in between those two points. Um, but what we're, what we're also looking at here are some other ways that we can potentially draw a wall. So maybe we want a rectangle. If we click the points, we can go ahead and make a full room there. Um, you can do polygons, you can do circles, uh, you can do a three-point arc where you select one end, um, select another end, and then do a radius. Another nice part about, uh, about these tools are, let's say I know I want, I'm starting at this point, I know the other end of my arc is going to be at like 14 foot, two and a half. As I'm still in control of this, uh, this other end here, I can just start typing and say 14 foot six and a half inches and hit enter and it'll automatically place that other point at 14 foot six and a half inches across from across from there um, and then as I go to place the radius I've also got this um, this radius tool that's starting so if I want say an eight foot radius I can just start typing again hit enter and it'll make an eight foot radius there so now I've got a 14 foot six and a half di distance between these two points and an eight foot raise between them. Um, other things uh, that, that may be um, beneficial to know here, um, when, you're, when you're typing and when you're about to type, make sure that you are directly in line with what you wanna type. If all of a sudden you're at like two degrees off, it's going to draw that at two degrees. It's not going to draw it straight across. So whatever direction you're actually pointed, that's the direction that it's going to draw and um, move the distance that you type. Um, let's say I've got this tool going and I'm going to say 13 foot six here, and then I'll go 15 foot six in the other direction. You'll notice that when I click, it gives me the option to keep going. The reason for that is because I have this chain selected. If chain is not selected, as soon as I click the other end, it's going to back out of the actual wall tool. But having chain selected most of the time is the way you probably want to work. So for right now, let's say I, I'm done drawing this, um, this sequence of walls here, but I still have this, this wall tool kind of working off of this pivot point. To back out of this, I can either hit escape or I can right click and hit cancel. So if I hit escape once or cancel once, it backs me out of that pivot point, but I'm still within this place wall tool here. So if I click again, now I can start a new chain of walls. If I wanna back out of the wall tool entirely, I need to hit cancel twice. So if I've got my chain going here and I, now I wanna back out, I need to hit cancel once, cancel twice, and now I'm out of that wall tool entirely. So just to, it's something that happens to people uh, when they're new to Revit quite a bit. They'll think they backed out, but then they, they keep going and all of a sudden they're drawing walls again. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so other, other tools that are up here, we've got a center and an arc. So you click the center of the, the circle and then you can click a point and then draw the arc from there. Um, other options, uh, you've got basically tangents. Tangents, you select one end and it's gonna, no matter where I draw it, it's always gonna pull perfectly off of the end there. Uh, fill it, you select two walls that are already made and then it'll go ahead and, and fill the, um, like basically arc that corner there. You also have the option of pick lines 
or pick faces. So pick lines, if I had gone and drawn, let's say I have a bunch of detail lines here and I've been kind of sketching out an idea of what I, what I want to do. And then I go into my wall tool and I've got pick lines here. So if I hit pick lines, I can select those lines and place a wall on them. Another option that works a little bit quicker, and you'll notice I'm flipping back and forth and I'm actually grabbing the wall tool pretty quickly. Um, if you're not aware, if you hover over this, you'll see wall and then in parentheses WA. The hotkey for the wall tool is just WA. So whenever I'm out of the wall tool and just all of a sudden I have it, I'm just using that hotkey of WA and it pulls that up. Um, so if I have a bunch of these lines here and I want to place a wall on all of them, I can select the place wall, wall tool and then the pick lines. If I hit tab, it'll select all of those lines in that chain and I can click once and it'll select all of those. Um, I can also hit tab when I'm selected on it and grab the whole sequence and delete them as well. Um, the other option is pick faces. So if you have a 3D, a 3D element or something that is um, already created and you want to place a wall on the surface of that, um, a good example of this is maybe you've created a massing and now you're ready to place walls on that massing. Um, you can select the faces of the massing and whatever wall type you've selected, it's going to place that wall type on the surface of, of that mass. Um, that way you can eliminate the mass and actually have a, a model that is built out of walls as opposed to the massing itself. So other things to note here uh, that are that are important are this location line here and then your um, your parameters here which are controlled here but mostly we'll get into that when we get into the properties and things like that in the next video but this is a, an important um, thing to note when you're drawing your walls is how are you drawing them? Are you drawing them based on the center of the wall, the core center line, finish faces, um, core faces, that sort of stuff? Um, all of these correspond to the structural components of the wall, which we'll get into how the, the structure of a wall is built. But when we're just using this generic 8 inch wall, our default is the wall center line. But maybe we've created these walls and we know that we want to keep this amount of space in between here. So any wall that we draw, we want, <coughs> excuse me, to extend out from this, uh, this line. So if that's the case, I can use, say, finish face interior. And now when I click and drag, my default point that I'm clicking on is always going to be that finish face on the very inside. So I can, I could hit the pick lines. And if this finish face interior is selected, you'll see it's asking me which side of the line do you want this to be on. So I want to go on the outside, hit tab, select it, and now it's just made walls all the way around the outside of those lines. Um, the reason that that is important is because whatever this location line is set to, that is what's going to control if you ever change that wall. So let's say, so for example, let's say we've got Let's draw a wall here with our location line of being the finish face interior. We'll do one as the center line there. And I'm going to draw a detail line here. And I'm going to say, OK, this detail line is going to be perfectly in line with that there. And I'm going to draw this one with the center line there. Actually, let's move this down to that point here. Nope, I changed my mind again. OK, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go into this wall, and I'm going to change. Uh, don't worry about how I'm doing this right now. We'll get into that later. But let's say I'm going to make all of a sudden make this a, a one foot thick wall as opposed to the eight inches that it was before. Now, you'll notice that when this expanded, this line is still perfectly in line with with the edge of this. So it expanded that four inches that I added up. So this element here along the side here controlled. It said, I know my location line is the finish face interior. That is this part. 
anything, any changes to this wall that need to be made, I am growing the opposite direction because I am holding this line always. This one, it's the wall center line. So it's going to hold the center and then it expanded out from that. So the four, I should have exactly six inches on either side of this rather than if it had been controlled the other way. Let's say I had, I had drawn the center line through the center here that would have expanded just that direction. I'm expanding in different ways because of this wall center line versus finished face interior. The big kind of ramifications of this are, let's say you've got your entire floor plan laid out and then all of a sudden your client decides, I don't want to do, I don't want to do a stone exterior, maybe I want to do a stucco exterior. Okay, that's great. Now that's going to change how my wall operates or how thick my wall is. If I have this all set to the finished face interior um, location line, I can change the components of the exterior of my wall and it's always going to keep my interior spaces the same, which is probably what you want to do. Just because your client changed from stone to stucco, you don't want to have to run through your entire model and chase down the like three inches that are going to change the entire wall type and, ch and potentially change the spaces of your interior. If you drew all of your walls with this location line of wall center line and then you change that, all of a sudden your interior spaces are all gonna gonna grow a little bit because this exterior wall shrunk, um, if that makes any sense. If for whatever reason you drew it as a wall center line and you wanna change, you wanna make sure that you, you're changing the location line, you can always come in here under the properties and change that as well. But when you're initially drawing those walls, that is something to be aware of when, uh, when you use the wall tool. What type of kind of constraint are you gonna put on this wall as its default? So just something to be aware of that this does impact how your walls behave if you ever change them in the future. So that's kind of a basic run through of drawing walls and how, how they can operate um, and some things to be aware of as you get into them um, initially. So the next uh, video that we're going to go through are the properties and type properties of the different wall types.